Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back. And I know it's been a while since I created a video, but I've been pretty busy with my professional life. So I didn't have no time uh, to make videos on the house or on the cars. And in this video, we're going to insulate the tower room. And in fact, we're going to insulate the ceiling or the floor. There's many different ways on how you can insulate your house. This is not my daily desk, but it's pretty handy to explain things. So we're going to install insulation on the attic of the tower. Now I'm not going to insulate the roof as such. And if you look on the picture, you'll see that the roof is actually the yellow triangle. That is not the part we're going to insulate. That part we have in the previous video enforced. We enforced the structure of the roof. Below that, we have the tower room, and that is the blue rectangle. And in the blue rectangle, we fixed the walls, we changed the window frames, we did a lot of work on that already. We fixed the floor, and you can see that uh, on my YouTube channel on all the work that has happened in that room. And that room is as good as ready. Now, that room has a very old oak ceiling that was covered with plaster, so we removed the plaster to expose the old ceiling and then we repaired and we sandblasted the old ceiling and now that is looking pretty neat. However, um, I still need some insulation. So instead of insulating the roof, I'm going to insulate the ceiling of the tower room or the floor of the attic. And that is the uh, purple line that you see there on the picture. And the second part we're going to insulate is the top of the walls and for that, we're going to use different materials and you'll see me using that while we go along in this video. The roof of the tower is covered with natural slates and here I have one of those slates. This is natural stone and they slice them out of a rock basically. They are very thin, very solid and they last a lifetime and more. You find this on old churches quite often. Nowadays people use uh, artificial slate, I went for original slates quite expensive, but it's worthwhile the effort. Now, these slates, they have quite some overlap when they're laying on the roof, but still it is possible that you get some powder snow under a heavy wind through the small little gaps. It is not 100% uh, wind tight. So then you could get powder snow on the backside inside the attic of the tower. Now that wouldn't be very good. So that's why I have a second board in the back on the rafters and you'll see that uh, and shortly I'm gonna show you that. Whereby um, no water or snow or anything else can actually come through. But these boards, they can get a little bit damp. They are waterproof, they are water resistant, but they get damp at the inside. Now if I was to put insulation in the back uh, of that on the beam stand, I would create a damp area and, and I really don't want to do this because I want to preserve all this nice old wood that's been there for so long. That's why I am not going to insulate the roof of the tower, but actually the floor or the ceiling of the tower room itself. And I will be using PUR panels, uh, polyurethane panels, and those are very solid panels with an aluminum coating on both sides. But let me show you that, what I'm going to use, and also, why I went for a certain thickness, because the insulation factor is very important. Now to decide what kind of thickness you need for your panels, you need to do a couple of calculations and you need to calculate the insulation factor. We call it RD. And that depends on the material and the thermal conductivity of the material, which we call the lambda. I'll come back to that in a few seconds. So I went for six centimeters for the walls and I went for 16 centimeters for the floor. And there's a good reason for that because where I live, I live in a moderate climate whereby the winters are not all that cold, maybe minus four, minus five degrees centigrade for a few days. And the summers are not all that great either. Um, it's very seldom that we reach 30 degrees centigrade. Most of the time it's around 22, 24. So I have no real need for cooling. However, we have legislation and all houses should be insulated. New houses have a factor between five and six and a half to seven, which is already fairly high for the roof, and they have a factor of four to five uh, for the walls. So I decided to at least uh, achieve the same values. And let me show you on how you calculate this. The formula is very simple. It's RD equals the thickness 
of the material divided by lambda. And we know that lambda is very specific for different products. For per, uh, in this case, this is what I'm using, it's 0, 20, 22. If you're going to use something else, then you're going to have another value. Even bricks have a value. And the thickness is the thickness of your insulation panel. So I went for 16 centimeters or 160 millimeters. And the result of that calculation is that my insulation factor, Rd, equals to 725. So the higher this number, the better the insulation factor, the better the material is to keep the heat in or keep the heat out. The panels that I'm using are 160 millimeters thick, and I'm having a lambda or a declared thermal conductivity of 0 0.022. And now you can do the calculation and it will give you the RD value. Uh, the RD value on these panels uh, is marked, and I just need over here, so 7.25, that's the RD value. And that's exactly what I wanted to achieve. This is the highest value that is recommended for new houses. So I should be good for the actual floor. The weather is really like shit and uh, I ran out of some panels so I had to get some additional panels for the tower room. But my god, the weather is bad. So now we're going to continue and uh, insulate first of all the top of the walls and then actually the floor or the ceiling of the tower room. So I think I talked enough, so let's go to the attic. So we are in the attic of the tower and you can see the roof structure. And then of course on the ground, the blue stuff, this is where the oak planks are, which is actually the ceiling for the tower room. And I have actually covered up the walls with insulation panels, the ones that you just saw me picking out of the truck. So I'm using six centimeters or 60 millimeters thick insulation panels, which are having an aluminum coat on both sides. And it's actually teeth and groove, as you can see, so I can fit that together very nicely. So all this sticks properly then. To cut these panels to length or cut holes in it, I'm actually using a wood saw, um, but with a very fine tip, as you can see. And the reason for that fine tip is that I can punch it through uh, the panel. So I can just do this and then cut a nice square hole out which otherwise would be far more difficult with a big blade, right? There we go, see? Cutting these panels to the right length uh, is easy because you have markers on these panels, so you just need to go along with that. And then we fill up the gaps. That will lock the panels pretty well in place. All right. So once these panels are in place, we're going to put some aluminum foil on top of that where they join. And that way you create a very tight uh, seal. And you see this gray part here, this is kind of a waterproof board. 
But when I say waterproof, it means that it can actually let humidity through. So if you get a lot of small snow coming in and it would blow underneath the slates, then you might see this getting a little bit wet. It's not dripping, but it gets wet. Now, if you were to insulate those rafters here, then you're going to create a damp area. And I don't like to do this. Um, I know it can breed, but still it's going to be a little bit damp. So I'd rather leave the whole structure uh, free so it can breed because this is a non-user room anyway. So that's why I'm insulating uh, the floor or the ceiling of the uh, tower room and also the top of the walls. Gaps and to fill up the gaps between the panels and the beams I'm using Easy Fix. It's kind of an insulation foam but at the same time it's kind of a glue. Works pretty well. It comes with a gun on top of it. So I'm going to need about seven or eight bottles of this uh, to fill up all the gaps, especially on the floor. All right, so let me show you the floor panel now. So the panels that go on there are really thick panels, as you can see. And they are insulated on both sides with aluminum, so both on the top and in the back. And they're also teeth and groove. And they will go against the sides here. And we'll tack those in place with a little bit of glue so they don't shift around. And these panels are 16 centimeters thick or about seven inches. So they provide a very, very good insulation factor. I have placed on top of the oak planks this fleece. And this fleece is specifically for roofs. And underneath the tiles where I live, you will find nowadays this kind of a fleece being attached before the tiles go on. It's very strong on one side, it's blue in this case, and the other side is kind of a soft filled black. And it's really, really strong, it's enforced, and you can see it's, it's very hard to rip it. This is an extra insulation factor, and it also prevents dust coming through and things like that. So now it's time for the floor, so. These are the floor panels and I already have placed one and um, I know I have a corner of this one because that's uh, a defect in the machining but we'll fill it up with foam afterwards, not a big deal. And sometimes you can get these panels a bit cheaper because they have some small defects and for this floor that really doesn't really matter. So now I need to take the second one and cut it to size and install it. So let's see if we can get this uh, put in place. All right, so that's not like this. Maybe, yeah. And I really want to make sure that they're close properly. There we go. And now we're going to tape that up. And as you can, as you can hear, it's really stormy outside. Um, we had a couple of days of nice weather, and now it looks like winter came back. All right. So I'm going to continue with placing the remaining panels here on the floor on this stretch and then we'll do the other side and once I'm all done we fill up the gaps with some foam and then I'll show it to you what the end result is. I installed all the panels and now I'm going to fill up all these holes with some foam. I'm done with installing all these panels on the floor and believe me, it took me a hell of a time, especially around all those beams and I'll give you a close up in a few minutes because I had to cut it all out. The gap that you see right here, this is where the hatch is uh, to get down to the tower room itself. So I have a cover that goes in here, a lid, but of course I took it off now because I have to get in the tower. But all by all, this is um, pretty good stuff. And you can walk on this, it doesn't really uh, damage it. Of course, not with high heels, but I'm not wearing high heels, so. 
And around the oak beams, I placed the panels as close as possible. We filled it up with foam and then we glued some of this aluminum tape on it. And here you can see how thick these panels are. So this should be quite all right. So now it's time to clean up things. So all that work is now done. So now it's time to clean up all this mess and then uh, we'll start on the electricity, the lights. And that's going to be something special because we're going to make home built lights. You'll see that in my next video. I hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I did. Although some parts I didn't really like cutting all this insulation and there's a lot of dust coming from that. But nevertheless, the job is done and I'm pretty happy. Bye-bye and thanks for viewing.